On this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to review the new Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull playset from Mattel. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Hello everybody and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Gladfelter here. I have loved the Masters of the Universe Origins line and have reviewed a lot of it. If you'd like me to do more Masters of the Universe Origins reviews, hit that like button. And if you want to see when those episodes arrive, click on that subscribe button and that bell icon. Back on October 9th, Blurry Pictures were confirmed that we were going to get a Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull. And now in 2021, they are starting to arrive in Canada. And the US pre-orders should ship in April, but I couldn't wait that long, so I got myself one of those Canadian Grayskulls and had him shipped down south of the border so that I could open this thing up and review it here on the channel. This one was shipped to me in its shipper box and there is one gray skull per shipper box, which is kind of insane. And when opening it, the actual gray skull box fills up every inch of the shipper box. So finding a mint condition in box sealed gray skull for the origins line is going to be tough if the shipper box gets beat up at all. And when opening, be careful because there is nothing protecting the top of the box from any type of box cutter that you use to open the shipper. And the box for Grayskull itself is massive. It's just about 26 and a half inches long and about 18 and a half inches tall and about five and a half inches deep. And when you take it all in, it's just wondrous. We loved the artwork when we first saw it. The pencils by Axel Jimenez and the colors by Nate Bartsch just are absolutely jaw-dropping. And it's so great that they gave such a large tapestry for those great artists to work with here. We went into every detail of this art with Nate Barch on the channel back in October. I'll put a link to that in the description below and also right here. But it's an absolute nod to the amazing artwork from the original Masters of the Universe line and it just looks amazing. It's a total battle royale with so many characters. Grayskull at the forefront and just this beautiful pink, purple, and blue spacey sky with big planets. It just, ah, uh, it looks incredible. The artwork wraps around the flaps as well as the front of the box. The top, bottom, and back have actual pictures and kind of cross-sell what this box contains, including the Castle Grayskull, the accessories, the play features, and a whole bunch of the previously released beasts, vehicles, and figures. Taking this gray skull out of the box, it is tightly packed in there. So that large box is not just uh, filled with a bunch of air. The gray skull takes up every inch inside of that box. And my first impression is that this thing is much larger than the pictures had led me to believe. Toy companies don't really do play sets anymore. And if they do, they're usually really lacking a lot of space, size, and details. But even without anything put in yet, it, it's much larger than I ever thought it would be. There is some assembly required and a few stickers to apply, but it's fairly easy and pretty straightforward to put the floors in. There's a nice little clicking, snapping sound. The computer and electronics just kind of plug right into the walls. The bottom of the elevator also clicks right in. And the throne has a nice little notch on the bottom to make sure it goes in just right to operate the trapdoor mechanism. I'm not a big fan of having to apply stickers, but you know, it wasn't too bad. Uh, they're really the same stickers that were on the original playset, save for the two banners, which we got an upgrade on here. They're actually a, a actual piece of cloth, which I thought was really, really neat. It has the same consistency as uh, most ribbons uh, would have, but it just adds, it's a really nice touch. And uh, you know, I really, really, really dig it. I think the updated dungeon uh, sticker looks really good. I like that it has a recessed place to apply it, which kind of helps you uh, in the application. There is a big sticker for the computer screen, which is probably the toughest one to apply because it has very unique little edges to it. So just be very careful there. I mean, really my advice across the board is really put it up to the edges. It fills a lot of the space uh, that the sticker intends to apply to. Uh, the one kind of knock on any of the stickers here is for the flag. It's a lot smaller uh, than it was on the original one. Uh, but other than that, I think most of the stickers here are really nice. The graphics look great and they really pop. Once assembled, this gray skull looks so stinking cool. I mean, 
overall, the, the impressions in hand are way beyond any expectations that I had uh, when first seeing those pictures back in October. I was thinking this would be slimmed down compared to the original one, uh, but when going side by side with the vintage Grayskull, it takes up about the same amount of space. It's about just as big, but it's actually a little bit deeper and a little bit thicker throughout, which makes it bigger and, and has more play area than even the original Castle Grayskull, which was a, a big shock to me. From outside to inside, things that you know you could, could consider flaws with the original gray skull are improved here. And looking at the outside, you know, you look at that that big right tower of gray skull. It is a, a complete a tower. So the original one, I kind of cut it in half. And here they give you both sides a full standing area that does split in half when you open it up. And honestly. It's a huge improvement compared to the original one and something, you know, that the things that they did with the classics version, which was great and amazing, uh, but this one is for a fraction of that price. So it's really nice uh, that we're getting, you know, these enhancements and improvements to the original Gray Skull, uh, you know, at under 80 bucks, which is great. Other concerns that I had in those original pictures was what paint applications were we going to get. Uh, but we actually got some pretty decent paint apps here on this Grayskull. On the outside, you know, the back of it actually has the brown uh, uh, paint to represent the wood and the, the thatched roof. Um, and then on the front, we have, you know, uh, the, the dark around the eyes. And, you know, that kind of mossy green color looked a little off-putting in some of the pictures, but it's really subdued and, and presents really well in person. And then that door, that jaw bridge, uh, is actually fully painted, and it looks fantastic. It's a wooden door on the front side uh, and has the paint to represent uh, the metal pieces as well as the kind of uh, uh, oxidized uh, shield. And when you look side by side with that vintage Castle Grayskull, it is, you can just see how much thicker it is. And, and that is just a really, really cool feature of this playset because it allows you to uh, display and have so much more play area than the original one had. Which again, in this era of play sets never happening is awesome. The one main play feature on the outside is the jaw bridge and it does not disappoint. So you can either use just one half of the power sword or both halves uh, and you, you stick it in and it opens up. But what's really cool, it's actually a spring locked mechanism. So unlike the original one where you kind of push and then it would just fall down, uh, this one you just push and it un like kind of uh, unlocks it and then it will fall. But the second you push it back in, it'll click and lock into place. So that's a really nice feature there. And then with the, the bridge down, he-Man uh, stands very comfortably uh, within that doorway and can easily go inside and outside, which was something the classics versions uh, fixed compared to the Vintage one. But again, uh, it is done here at this mass retail release of the Castle Grayskull. So another uh, big uh, home run here uh, for the design team of this Origins version of Castle Grayskull. This Grayskull still features a handle and it's very easy to pick up and take with you, which is awesome. And then it actually adds something again from the Classics version where instead of the little tabbed uh, locks on the side that the Vintage one had, uh, this has little uh, lock latches uh, that seem to work great. And there's even a extra uh, little uh, connector points that, that kind of help keep it closed as well. So that is a nice upgrade here added to the Grayskull. Now opening up this Grayskull, there is a lot of features and accessories, so let's take a closer look at those. Uh, first, I gotta go with the weapons rack. It's kind of that classic uh, accessory of part of uh, Grayskull, at least to me anyway. And it is a lot smaller than the vintage one, uh, but I do think they added some enhancements here. They, the weapons actually click into place, so unlike the vintage one where they just fall off all the time, and you probably lose those pieces, uh, these click into place and actually stay in place, which is really nice. But you do have fewer accessories with this Grayskull versus the original, uh, but I assume we'll get more of those accessories over time doesn't bother me too much I think it looks really good it's in that wood color and I think it it, it does uh, come across really nicely the training wheel is an upgrade here it's a lot thicker and chunkier and more detailed than the original castle gray skull came with I think it's a really nice upgrade here and all of the cardboard accessories got upgraded. So instead of being cardboard or a sticker, they are all plastic, the computer, uh, the little thing that goes next to uh, the spacesuit, which we do not have a spacesuit, but it looks like there's a peg there for an eventual spacesuit. So maybe that'll be something they'll release down the line. Not too much of a bummer here that we didn't have it. I just hope that eventually we do get it. 
And then that uh, other weapons rack that was a cardboard cutout. We actually have another uh, rack for our weapons here. Now, it doesn't come with any weapons, but you know you can add uh, you know any of your extra Motu Origins weapons to that rack. A nice little add here. Didn't need to be there at all, but a nice thing to have nonetheless. The ladder was a surprise, you know, really enjoyable accessory here. Not something you really think, but I love how they kind of added these little notches around the playset to kind of give you more use out of the ladder. It's also a lot larger uh, or longer than the original one, and even the classics one that you can really, you know, if you're playing with the figures, uh, it makes sense that this ladder would actually function and be usable. Uh, so you have the ability to, on the computer side, uh, to kind of notch it on that level and then put the ladder up against uh, the very top of the back half of the right tower and it looks great there honestly if i if, if i display this open that's probably where i'll have the ladder the most because it kind of lets you get to that next level uh which is something that's a, a nice thing to have and then there's also notches on the throne room side uh that allow you to go from the ground floor to the throne room and it, again it just allows it to hold it there so i think it's a really nice feature add and for the iconic laser cannon, it keeps a lot of the same uh, colors uh, from the original one, uh, but it does kind of change up the look of the two cannons. It's kind of smaller and shifted to one side, which I, is a design choice. I think it, it looks fine here. The handle's actually kind of too big for most any Origins figure to use, but one great thing about the castle itself is the actual landing area there, or the actual ground or, or floor area is much larger than the original one. Like for the original one, you can kind of just like tuck on and hold on to the laser cannon for dear life uh, for the figure. There's really nowhere else for the figure to stand. Uh, but here there's a ton of space that fills up uh, that whole area and there's a foot peg hole. Uh, so it's very comfortable to have one or two figures uh, stand in that area. The elevator functions almost identical to the original one. It has a little eagle that connects to a string and you pull it up and uh, you kind of can just clip it on to different parts of the castle, kind of keep it upright if you have a figure sitting on it. Uh, I think it's nice. I, I like that it's still functional. And for one of the most iconic play features from that original Grayskull, as well as the classics Grayskull, the trap door works just like it should. Looking like the original one with a, a rectangular shape, much like a rug would be. And uh, it's big enough to, you know, allow most any figure so far in the Origins line to fall through. And, you know, trying it out here with Skeletor and He-Man, uh, I think it works great. I will say the Origins figures on, a, on the whole don't really get into a perfectly seated position very well. Uh, so sitting any figure on the throne is a little bit difficult. Uh, it was really difficult for the Sorceress figure that came with this. But uh, overall, though, I think the throne looks great and the trap door works great. And really, what more could you ask for? Speaking of that sorceress figure, this figure actually looks fantastic. I was expecting this kind of be a throw in for them to really not put much effort into the figure, especially since it's mostly casted in white since this is the Temple of Darkness uh, version of the sorceress. Uh, but the, the paint details they added to the face really pop. I, I It brings out so much of the sculpt that uh, it looks way better uh, than some of the pictures that we got uh, when we, this uh, set was first announced. And honestly, uh, this was a nice surprise. It's a really nice figure. Uh, the feathers, uh, you know, some of them have a, a bit of a softer plastic to it. And really, you know, I, I, I can see how people do not like the, the female knees and that's present here as well. Uh, but other than that, I, I think it's a really great representation of the sorceress and one of the best, if not the best female uh, head sculpt and paint applications that we've seen yet. And going side by side with the vintage sorceress, uh, you know, I think a lot of the things have been improved from the original sorceress. And uh, for that accessory, it looks very similar uh, to uh, the original staff, uh, but it is a lot thicker. So before you get any ideas, maybe like if you're missing that staff as an expensive vintage accessory, uh, being able to use this new one, it will not fit in your vintage sorceress's hand. So again, getting this great figure along with a fantastic playset for under 80 bucks is amazing. Overall, this thing has blown me away. Like honestly, I was really in it for the artwork. I thought the artwork was amazing. And you know, in the first images, it really didn't seem like the Grayskull was as impressive as the art, but in hand, in person, this thing, uh, exceeded my expectations, like well beyond my expectations. Uh, it, it is a great homage to the original Castle Grayskull while updating it for uh, the modern audiences as well as accommodating and bringing in 
different elements that were added, you know, for the classics gray skull, uh, as well as maybe some of the detail we saw in the 2000 X series, but it is a true tribute to the iconic, uh, original castle gray skull. And honestly, uh, there's so many ways they could have cut corners and just given us, you know, a plastic shell in a box. And we probably would have still been happy. But instead of just resting on their laurels here, they really made a really good playset. Everything, the build feels really solid. And uh, the, the paint details, uh, stickers where they needed to be, but then also painted details where they needed to be. I just think overall, uh, again, I just freaking love this thing. And it absolutely gets the Geek Dad Life by rating. Definitely check out some of my other videos on the channel. I've done a whole bunch of Masters of the Universe Origins reviews. You can find a playlist for that right here. And then also uh, we interviewed one of the artists that did the artwork, that amazing packaging artwork for this playset with Nate Barch. Check that out, did that with John from my live toy talk show, Toy Geeks, which happens Sundays at nine o'clock. All right, until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.